Okay. So once you have downloaded and installed Gephi um, and uh, downloaded the zip file, uh, you can unzip the file and it should present you with a couple of different uh, uh, Excel file sheets and CSV files and PDF. And you can ignore this one right here. Um, if you don't have that file, just let me know, raise your hand, or some of us even need a minute. But put, put it somewhere uh, easily findable uh, on your desktop or other uh, location. Okay. And once you are done with that, please open up Gephi and it should take you to this intimidating interface. I can hear, am I projecting loud enough for them? Okay, so everybody, if you are on the Gephi interface, you should be in this uh, overview tab. Uh, data laboratory is where all of our statistics will live. We don't have to really worry about that. The preview will come to a bit later, but this is a tab we want to be over. Okay, so we have downloaded a couple of uh, CSV files. CSV stands for comma separated values. You can think of it as a very stripped down Excel spreadsheet file. It's like the barest bones, plain text version of a, a spreadsheet file. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go to file and we're going to go to import spreadsheet. And then point that to uh, the directory where you unzipped all your uh, files, the Giphy Workshop data files. And what we're going to do is highlight ASOIAF all nodes, the CSV file, and we're going to open that. And this should bring up this uh, other menu where it's going to give you uh, the breakdown of the uh, columns and uh, rows. And everything looks fine here. Separate as comma, it identifies it as a notes table automatically. Great uh, Unicode format, that's fine. We don't have to worry about that. And once we're happy with that, we can click next. It'll give you import settings. This all looks fine. Uh, ID, label, intervals, click finish. Let's bring up another menu, an import report. Um, shows you the number of nodes, 796. Now, I happen to know that this is a undirected graph type, so we're going to change this to undirected instead of mixed or, or uh, directed. And once we're happy with that, we can click OK. I should bring up this square with a bunch of dots. Everybody over distance all right? No. I mean, I'm not. Oh, okay. I, I obviously didn't do something. I downloaded Gephi, but I don't have any of that file. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you download Okay. We're going to wait for a second here. How about everyone else? Which file did we look for? The, the nodes file. Yeah, so I have all nodes. Any issues? Uh, someone posted about the Java installation error. Um, that's what I had. Uh, there's a YouTube video I can link that solves that. that might, okay, great. You um, have to like change the template. Oh, I see. We'll say like Java not something. Sorry, what was the problem and what solution? Someone in the Zoom chat there said they're having this Java installation error. I had the same thing, I'm sure. What's the video called? I'm not sure. I have to go look at the history. Okay. I watched it like a week ago. <laughs> this is on a Windows machine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Java version okay. something is not found, even though we have Java on it. Installed. Okay, yeah, you need to have Java installed on your Windows system. Yeah, well, I already had it installed before. It still has this error for some reason. Oh, really? It really is like a fairly common issue. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, it's not and again, this is being recorded, so if you uh, follow us, Steph, uh, you can watch the recording later. Uh, 
so we are playing with a, a prefab data set um, that uh, someone has already been nice enough to put together. Um, and this data set is actually the uh, all the characters and their relationships in the Game of Thrones book. Uh, and as you, if you're familiar with the the movie or the TV series or the book series, you know that it's quite sprawling. And so it's a good example of the kind of robust uh, data set yes, that you can, can tackle. Um, we're obviously we're not going to build our own data sets, quite a couple data sets, but it's about to be a good way to introduce to you the uh, capability and the potential of Jeff. Thank you so much. Sure. So how are we doing? We're good? Yeah, thank you. Um, and other than installation problems over distance, anybody else have any issues? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, well, if everyone's okay, I'm just going to move forward. Um, and then during the workshop portion, we're kind of working on our own thing. So I can come back and help out anybody who's got issues. All right, so we have our nodes. And if you're familiar with the network, uh, there are nodes, which are like the hubs of where the interactions occur. And there's edges or vertices. Uh, those are the connections to the all different nodes. So right now we just have the nodes, but now we got to import the edges, the information about edges. So what we're going to do is go back to file and go back to import data spreadsheet. And you'll see another file here called ASOIAF all edges. And that's the one we want to import. And we have to click open. And we have a similar menu. It's got uh, tables and rows here. Automatically recognize this is an edges uh, spreadsheet. And we're going to click, click OK. This all looks fine. Click finish. And here's where it gets a little tricky. Automatically detects this undirected. It's fine. So we need to append this to the existing workspace, not a new workspace. So we uh, click on that radio button, click OK, and you see your uh, your network should have changed into this hot mess. You guys good? OK, so now we have all the information. It's picked it graphically, but it's very difficult to read. Right? Can't really make a whole lot of sense. So what we need to do is play around with the layout down here on the left. And you're going to see if you click on this drop down menu button, you can see a bunch of options for different uh, layout forms. And you can play with these at your leisure in the future. But for right now, we're just going to focus on Force Atlas. And it should give you all these options or criteria in Force Atlas. What we're interested in is repulsion strength. This is going to determine how far along, how far the, the separate nodes are from each other. Let's highlight propulsion strength and we can change this to, let's say, 9,000. You can put in whatever number you want. I'll start with nine and click run. And you should see the network begin to expand. The algorithms continue to run. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So it's expanded. And if you want to adjust your view, you can click on this. Uh, magnifying glass that should take you to a, a broader view where you can use your your mouse wheel to zoom in so if you like to zoom out and when you're happy with it you can just go let it run or you can click stop and it's gonna click stop okay and now this is better right we can kind of discern different uh areas of concentration outliers but we still it's still difficult to read so let's play around the um, interface a little bit more uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go focus on the color tab let's go to appearance and then nodes make sure we click on the nodes tab right we're going to make sure we're going to click on the color palette here and then we're going to uh, go to I think we did some ranking. I think rank, yeah. Go to ranking and then choose an attribute and click on degree. And once you click on degree, it should give you this uh, gradient. Let's apply that. You see that um, that makes it a little bit more readable, right? 
This is uh, using a different color scheme. You can see again which areas the concentration are of, of notes and which areas of um, what outliers are faded, right? And you can play with the color scheme if you like. I'm just going to go to the default and give you all these options, you know, and then right click this little button here. Um, I don't have that. Yeah, every time I hit the gradient, I have a new ticker that pops up. So I have like seven tickers now that I changed. Okay, so. I want to make sure we're on appearance, <laughs> node, ranking, and this this should be highlighted. This uh, color wheel, this color palette. Uh, Is that a result? Are you going like to make it green? Did you make it? No, but I haven't hit apply yet. So maybe I'll just do Oh, you don't have to put that here. With, with all those uh, arrows there before? There was like three on there. Yeah. So I was like, oh, which one do I put? Oh, okay. You don't need to touch any of that. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, oh, fine. Okay. Okay. So that just runs. Yeah, yeah. you can see that. Okay. That's what I was afraid of. What is the. Um, how well connected they are to each other? Like, yeah. uh, how often, like, how often, like, the more connections, the denser, the clearer the Yeah, yeah. So, I guess it's yeah. yeah, we'll get into that. Cool. All right, everybody okay? People are I good. don't have an appearance. I don't have an appearance. I don't even have Okay, um, so again, on, on appearance, I'm going to be at nodes and then make sure the color wheel is picked and the ranking three. Okay. All right. Okay, so what we also want to do if we want to um, make it a bit more legible, we're going to run some statistics. And on the far right here, she has a speed tab called statistics. And what we're interested in, you have all these options again, and we're going to run the network diameter uh, statistic algorithm. Okay? So once you find the tab, you find network uh, diameter, and it's going to give you this uh, menu or this uh, pop up with, uh, window. Click OK, and it should give you a little report. Uh, this is a nice report. We don't have to really worry about this, just click out of it and say OK, close. And if you're interested in looking at what uh, kind of statistics are run or the results of that, you can go to data laboratory and I'll show you all this uh, nice information. But again, we're not going to worry too much about that right now. Okay. So uh, let's go back to appearance. Now that we have the statistics and we know it's living in the data laboratory, we'll go back to appearance and we are going to go back to nodes and we are going to click on size. So Instead of this color uh, palette, we're going to go to the side. And then we're going to go to rankings, this window right here. And then we're going to choose an attribute. And I'm going to choose between this centrality. And it should give you options here minimum size or maximum size. And once you're there, you can click apply. See what happens.
Okay, so the result should be a graphical representation of the relative importance of different nodes, the bigger nodes being represented by literally an expansion of, of the node itself on the graph. Does everyone have that? And you get the analysis step. Analysis step. I'm not sure what that means. Global surgery, please. Uh, That's Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan. Okay. Um, so I think the question is how did we get those statistics in the first place? And what we did was we went to this menu over here and clicked on statistics and looked over at network overview and we clicked on the network diameter algorithm. We ran that algorithm. And once you did that, you should have some data that uh, has been internalized, and then you can represent that data by going back to appearance, nodes, size, ranking, between those centrality. Yes. Have you told us what this data is, or is that like a reveal at the end? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's uh, the Game of Thrones novel. Okay, so it's characters in Game of Thrones. Yeah, characters in Game of Thrones. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how that looks. I mean, if you're familiar with the TV show or the uh, books, you can kind of guess who these different nodes are and uh, take a guess and see if you're going to be right. Um, how do you center the map in the workspace? So there's a little button here on the bottom left. It's got a uh, magnifying glass. Click that and it should center it. And if you want to zoom in, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in if you like. Okay. Are we good to move forward? Um, it seems like this, at least the representation, is not deterministic in the sense that, like, our two graphs are usually are different. Is that, uh, what exactly is the process that you're into that? Is it um, just because the um, orientation of the nodes is like, uh, like a random, uh -huh. there's like variance in there, or, and slash, could we reproduce like your graph exactly during some seed or something like that? Or something, if that was necessary? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, every time I've done it, it's, the orientation has been a little bit random. Right. You can tweak it if you'd like. Um, and that, that goes according to the layout representation. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not an expert in guessing. But uh, that's my understanding. Okay. Mine looks very similar to yours. I'm like kind okay. of looking, trying to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it would be it's like in any meaningful way, it's probably the same, but I don't know. If it's, you know <laughs> if I had told someone else to do what I did, I feel like they might have. Some I mean, it depends on when you, I guess, you stop running the right. whole algorithm. I guess if we all let it run until it reaches a conclusion, it might be similar, more similar. Oh, yeah, I guess maybe that's what's going on here. Like, I let it continue to run. Oh, okay. So it found some weird space point. Yeah. Beyond what? Control plus. And you can, if you're interested in tweaking, there Should is an option here. Yeah, because you don't have a mouse. Like, mm -hmm. Maybe you get like the finger drive. Oh, okay. Okay. So we just nodes around. Yeah, it'll be a smaller one. Right there, Ed. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we good to move forward? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So where was I? Um, we got the sizes, right? Okay. So, um, it's better, right, in that we can kind of discern um, the various nodes and their relative importance. Um, but there, we also want to distinguish between, you know, the nodes and the relationship to each other, right? So all this is kind of uh, on the same uh, color scale. Uh, but, you know, this node here is not necessarily connected to this node here. Um, so let us, let us, uh, run some more stats uh, in terms of uh, modularity, uh, and we can represent that in our, uh, our color scheme. Right? So if you go back to statistics um, and go to, where is it? 
modular uh, modular is right here. And we're going to run more stats here. Click run. I don't worry too much about these uh, parameters. Okay. Should give you modular reports. Again, let's not worry too much about that right now. Click close. Okay, we have more stats in our data labor uh, laboratory. Uh, and we're going to play with that again by uh, let's see, going back to appearance, going back to nodes, this tab here, and making sure we have our color palette fixed. Right? And then now we're going to go on the, click on the partition tab and choose an attribute and choose modularity class. That should give you a list here of different colors. Okay, according to the statistics, it's automatically assigned you different colors, and you can tweak this if you like. Uh, we're not gonna, I'm not going to worry about it. And click apply. And then you should see uh, relative modularity represented in the different colors that you can reach. No, can you do that right. again? How did you get it colorful like that? So, in modularity class, okay, what did so, you push? Right. Go back to appearance, nodes. Make sure the color palette is picked here. Top. Mm -hmm. And go to partition. Go down to an attribute. Pick modular box. Then you click apply. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. That's so good. Yep. Great. Okay. So we uh, still don't have a good idea of who is what, and all that information is stored in our CSV file. This out of the way. So what we need to do is play with our labels, right? So if you click on this T down here, it should give you all the names of the different characters in their nodes. Perspective. That's very difficult to read, right? Um, so what we can do to make it a bit more readable is click on this down uh, down arrow in sign mode, and it'll give you a sub menu. You can see that. We want to click on node size. If you click that, then it should be a bit more representative of the various labels and their relative importance. Everyone good? No? Okay. And you can you can tweak this by playing with the slider here. I'm sorry, not this slider, the other slider. Um, and you can, you can uh, adjust the size of various uh, labels to your heart's content. Um, you can change font and some default size and color if you like. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Okay, so you got this very complicated network graph of all characters and their various interactions. Uh, for my purposes, it's still a little hard for me to read because there's a bunch of tiny characters here that have you know, very few connections that kind of a, a clue, a uh, clear uh, reading of it, at least in my case. So I'm going to get rid of some of these. And if we go to the filters, we can, uh, we can uh, start to filter out some of the minor characters that we don't really care about. So if you go to the filters, you can go to topology, um, go to the submenu. Uh, I think it's the degree range if I'm interested in. And let's use this filter. You can double click it or just drag it down here under queries. And it should give you this nice little range here you can mess with. So I'm going to say I don't really care about characters who have five degrees of connection. So I'm just going to move for 10, nine degrees. You can you type this in if you like, but that's like the scale here. And I'm going to get rid of all the characters that have uh, fewer than 10 degrees. Click on filter. And you should see, okay, this is a bit more readable. You know, I've gotten rid of all the different minor characters that only have 10 degrees of connection. And you can play with that however you like. Maybe you're just interested in characters that have more than 29 degrees. 
are more than 40 people. Does that make sense? Someone say something. Is, is our uh, distance folks okay? That way it helps your label to not know. Uh, and then you want to get rid of all the labels. Keep the big list. Like remove the, the smaller ones, I guess. Oh, uh, hmm, that's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head, Jeff. I'm sorry. You wait. I don't know. Um, it's okay. All right. So let's say you're happy with your graph. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do next is import, export into a file that we can use. And we, to do that, we go on the preview, preview tab up here on the right, top right. And um, it should give you some parameters here uh, for presets, the default, and there's all kinds of different um, uh, outputs. Uh, play around with these however you like, but I'm just going to go with default curve for now. And uh, my preview window is not working for some reason. I don't think my your graphics are powerful enough, but you should, yeah, you can see some people already have a preview window. And you can customize these uh, according to uh, your uh, preferences. Uh, I'll make sure the label was shown. I'm going to mess with the font here. So you can like um, decide how thick you want the edges to be, how thin you want the edges to be. Uh, maybe you want to rescale the weight of the edges. Uh, maybe you want to mess with the opacity of the edges. I'm going to put 75. Um, and you're going to have to go back and forth and experiment with this, uh, depending on uh, what you want it to look like. Once you're happy with that, those parameters, you can click on uh, export down here, bottom left. And it should give you some options, right? You can export as a PDF, a PNG, or an SVG file. Um, so PNG is just a, like a JPEG. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this unless you're just going to use it for like, um, Web representation post on the website. SVG files are vector files, so these are going to be a bit better for uh, especially complicated uh, network graphs. Um, so this I'm just going to put PDF on, name it whatever you want, uh, and once you're ready, click save. Or save once I'm replacing it, I'll write it. And once you have saved it, you should be able to so click file and it should convert as PDF. What mine looks like. So I can already see that it's still a little cluttered. Uh, maybe I want to filter some further. Maybe I want to make the uh, Force Atlas propulsion string stronger so it's more separated. Uh, but you can see basically the gist of it, right? You can see on an already at a glance, sprawling novel. Maybe you already intuited the structure, but you know you see John Snow's uh, pretty central Tyrion Lannister, pretty central Targaryens off here, but still important. But you know maybe uh, this. What's useful about this is that it can give you at a glance um, a structure to the novel that maybe uh, reveals some things that are interesting, right? So. Uh, you're interested in Rice Karen for whatever reason, and you can see at a glance just how connected he is to the other characters and their role in the foreign voyage. Arya and Martel, all the way down here. Um, and, and again, you can kind of customize what this looks like based on um, the different criteria of uh, the graph and what you're interested in representing. Is everyone good so far with that? Okay. All right, so that's us playing around with the prefab uh, data set. The question then becomes, okay, well, how do we do this ourselves? Like, let's say you're interested in building your own data set. How can you make your own and then uh, run it through the interface or run it through, uh, yep. Let's click out of that. And I'm going to go back to my Okay. Um, 
I have included in uh, the zip file a file called workshop underscore network xlsx. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, if you can point your computer to it and double click it, it should open up a spreadsheet here with three sheet worksheets. Okay. And what I've done is I've taken the liberty of, of filling in some of the sections. Right? So let's say you're working on a, a historical uh, network graph or a social media network graph. Um, this is a, a good way to kind of uh, build your data set, right? So the two outputs that we're going to be interested in are, are nodes again and edges. And this character interaction sheet is just a worksheet. We're not going to actually export it or use it for um, uh, data interpretation. Um, and let's just, I'm just going to, I've just made up a, a nodes list here with a bunch of characters from fiction and history. And these are the main characters. Obviously, this is a small data set. You might be playing with a larger data set, but just for the sake of illustration, these are, are, are the major characters that we're interested in playing with. Right? So we have um, this column here called ID, and this other column called label. Right? So obviously, the label and the names of the different people. We also need to number them. And uh, Jeffy uh, uses a zero. Uh, uh, zero as the first uh, number, so it's kind of a good thing product number. But what we need to do is number them, and if we start, we can um, label these in uh, automatically with through Excel. If you just highlight these and pull it down, it should recognize the pattern at least for you. So we're going from zero to ten. Zero being Jack Frost and ten being Grendel's mother. Okay, everybody got everybody there. Okay, so um, we already have our nodes CSV file here in the principal. So let's save it. Go to File. Yeah, file. Save as. And you can name this whatever you like, but I'm just going to do workshop network underscore nodes. But we're not saving it yet. We want to make sure it's saved as a CSV file, all my separated values. I'll pick this one. Does it matter? Which CSV so we have? It can. Um, I've run into trouble with people using Macs who have used um, like a different. Like you can see down here is a Mac CSV file, it's an MS DOS CSV file. I think on the safe side, I use UTF 8. Uh, well, that was the formatting you started out with. Yeah. The other file here. So um, I would just be on the safe side and choose UTF 8. And once that form is selected, click save. Okay, it should give you this error or warning saying you know, it doesn't support workbooks. That, that's fine. All we're interested in is uh, saving this right now. So click OK. And let's go and check. All right, so you have the file here. And I told you CSV is plain text. So what you can do to check the integrity of the file is. Use Notepad, or if you're using a Mac, uh, what's the Mac equivalent of Notepad? Just write it or pen. It just needs like a plain text. Plain text file, yeah. What is that? Um, it's not BB Edit, is it? I have no idea. Or plus plus, there's some. Whatever your plain text uh, file of choice is, please use it on Mac. And, and Windows, it's Notepad. If you Click over, if you drag this file over, you can see again that it's just plain text. It's just separated by commas. Uh, so for some reason, I'm getting this error where it's giving you an empty uh, row or column here. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't need that. Giving error. All right. 
you can save it fine. If not, uh, we'll, we'll fix it a bit later. Okay. Um, anyway, just make sure that the file is saved as a CSV file. Um, and now this is going to get a little bit complicated. Okay. So if you go to the edges tab here, you can see a source, target, pipe, and a weight. And I'll explain what that means in a second here. Okay. So again, what we're trying to do is build uh, a spreadsheet that relates to the different kinds of relationships interactions that the different characters have had with each other and represents how important those interactions are. Um, and what we're going to do first is go through it manually. This is sort of labor intensive part of of uh, building a data set is like, let's say Joan of Arc is a character. I'm going to sit there and catalog every single char uh, character of importance that I determined to be important that Joan of Arc interacted with. And do the same for Blood, do the same for Santa Claus, Rapunzel, Bobble, Snowman. But uh, Geffy is not going to be able to read this, right? Geffy works with stats, right? So it needs to um, be able to interpret this in a numeric sense. So what we're going to do is um, going to again for the purposes of uh, just building our uh, data set, we're going to copy the ID label here, this row, paste it over here to the column to the right of label. So copy and paste. And what we're going to do here, uh, the right of Jack Frost on this column, we're going to use the VLOOKUP uh, function in Excel. Right? And, uh, I will type this into the chat just so you have it. And so you don't really have to worry about the what loop size equals VLOOKUP. Uh, open parentheses, A1, and I'll explain what this workshop underscore network underscore nodes commission points to C call C um, two comma false close parentheses okay, and again let me copy and paste this so you have this in the chat Okay, and what this is doing is basically it's telling Excel, look at this particular column, particular cell in this worksheet, worksheet, and spit it back out here. And we'll show you how this works. Everybody got that? I just can't see that. I can't see, oh, can't see it. <laughs> uh, Now, I, I've named my tab workshop network now. If, if you named it something different, you have to reflect that, that page. Okay. Uh, That's good. Any problems with the distance folks? Okay. So once you have typed that into Excel, it should spit back a number, right? In this case, five. And where's the number coming from? You go back to the node uh, tab, you'll see the number five for Joan of Arc, right? That's 20 characters. So if you go back to character interaction, five corresponds to Joan of Arc, right? 
So we're going to do the same for all these other entries. And just to make it easy, press control copy. And then I'm going to highlight all these. Press control D, control paste. And it should automatically copy the formula and should uh, adjust on the fly so that it's responding, to, it's uh, pulling the, the, the right number for each chart, the right chart. So because Joan of Arc is five, all the other instances of Joan of Arc should be five. Lot the impaler is two. You can double check by going to the nodes sheet and see if lot the impaler is two. And you see how they correspond to each other, right? Okay, great. So, what we're going to do is basically do the same thing, right? Um, except slightly different. Uh, control copy. And it goes to the next column. And we're going to do the same for these characters. We're going to look at their corresponding numbers. Pull this out. Now, I should give you an error. All I did is copy the formula um, and it adjusted on the fly. So it's pointing to an empty cell. So instead of B1, it should be delete. No, sorry, that's not. D1, but this should be. I have that for you. Right, so that should give you the next uh, correct number. And we're going to copy and paste again. And it should give you all the corresponding numbers for all these different characters. Okay. Any issues with that? Any problems? No? Okay. Okay. So now that we have the characters represented numerically, I'm going to copy all this. Copy these two rows, these two columns, I should say. And we're going to go over to our edges tab. And we're going to cut and paste. Right. But if we just press cut and paste, control V, it's going to give you a bunch of errors. Because what it's done at that point is copy the formula, and the formula doesn't work because it's pointing to the wrong place. Right? So if you're not interested in that, what we want to do is copy, uh, paste. Oops. Let's go back to copy again. Control copy. And control, or we're going to copy and paste, but I'm going to right click my mouse. Go to paste special and paste values. It's going to spit out the output, the results rather than the formula. That's what we're most interested in. Okay. All right, very good. Okay. So um, we have our nodes, we have our edges, our corporate character interaction. We the worksheet, this is kind of a, a basically scratch paper that we use to represent that numerically. Now we're going to need to fill in the type. And for the sake of simplicity, we're going to go with undirected. Undirected meaning that uh, the edge is bidirectional, right? And it's uh, symmetrical. If you want it directed, then it means like the connection of the relationship is one sided. Yeah. So is there a reason then in the previous game of Thrones chart that it picks, if it's um, undirected, is it picks one color over another? You know, like, like when the node will be blue, the other will be red. And like sometimes it's a blue link, otherwise sometimes it's a red link. I, don't know so. um, I think that's based mostly on uh, the, the degree of separation between the various nodes rather than the direction. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if you, if we had played with a directed um, data set, you would you actually see arrows pointing. Uh, okay. um, but for the sake of simplicity, again, we're just going to play with undirected. All that. Okay, so we're getting close. Now, this is where the interpretive part of uh, working with the humanities data set comes in. Right? So, we have these relationships. Uh, we've determined they're uh, undirected for now. Now, weight is um, 
how important those relationships are, right? So I actually have no idea how the Game of Thrones data set was determined in terms of weight, right? So, uh, and then subjective, right? So if you read the book and you decide that uh, Tyrion's relationship connection to this one minor character is really important because he tells him a secret, you put 10, you put 100, you just represent that numerically. You have to be as consistent, that's up to, up to you to build your own sort of kind of legend for what that means. Um, and, you know, it could mean anything, right? Could a connection be because they thought about the other character or they were in the same room with the other character, that they sent them a message with a raven? Uh, does that mean they fought each other? Did they kill each other or uh, damage each other? That's up to you. Um, and, you know, think of your respective disciplines, that might mean different things, right? So you have to build your own legend for what that means and consistent with otherwise the, the data is not, not really useful, right? So if I looked at um, uh, Jack Frost's relationship, the interaction with Joan of Arc is one time, and I thought, okay, it's you know, pretty minor because they just kind of walk each other each other's past opportunities on one. But uh, uh, other interaction with Joan, uh, Joan of Arc and Grendel's mother is really important because they, you know, I'm gonna go with Bechtel test. They talked about something other than a man. I'm gonna put 20, right? Or, you know, and you just go on, right? So that, I'm just gonna put random numbers for now. Uh, we had a question about um, this undirected directed. If you did put them all in as directed, how wow. would the, the table change or the graph change? Right, so it would be C source and target. Right? So if it was a director relationship, it would be coming from this source to this target. That's to, to, uh, right? But if you want to represent the other way around, you'd have to flip the numbers. So if you had to five, does that make sense? All right, so I'm just going to put random numbers for the sake of the exercise. Feel free to put in whatever numbers you want. Okay, so I got my numbers, I got my edges, I got my source, my target, my type of connection, I got my weight. Now I need to save this file, go to file and save as, and make sure it's not, it's, it's named differently that it hit the edges, right? Save that, do the same warning again, that's fine, it's okay. And now I should have saved that file. So now I have two CSV files, nodes and edges. I'm just going to double check my edges page, or edges file. That looks fine. Click out. I'm going to shut, I'm going to shut down Excel because I don't need it anymore. I already have my edges and nodes file. Um, yeah. Let me double check my files again. Edges, yeah, that's fine. Nodes. No, I saved the nodes in the wrong name. Okay, I gotta fix this. This is my bad. Yeah, just ignore me while I do this. Yeah, let's give me the error. I'll correct that. Correct that. Move that. Move that. Okay, now that's clean. Have it at zero. Okay. So now that we have our file, we just uh, all I need to do is uh, 
plug it in the same way to with the uh, uh, Game of Thrones one. Right, so let's go to a new project. You can save this if you like. I click on new project for myself. And I go back to overview. And you start by importing your spreadsheet, right? You go to file, import spreadsheet. Uh, and again, you want to start with nodes. Open this message. Text says node. Yeah, eight. That's fine. Column. I should like it. Yeah, that's fine. No issues are found. Make sure it's undirected. In the workspace, and click OK. All right, and then gives you the same thing. These nodes that don't really have a relationship. You want to add your edges spreadsheet. Same thing, go to edges, open. The text says edges table, great. Shows you the weights, the different uh, columns. Next, that's fine. Finish. And again, make sure to append to an existing workspace, not a new workspace. Okay, okay. so now again, you see our uh, graph here and we see the relationships being represented and then you can run through different layouts is everybody following so far is i you slow down or repeat myself i'm having a hiccup up here okay it says edges table means a source and target column with nodes ids but in the preview i have source and target And then also notably, I don't have any notes. All right. So you already imported your notes? Yes. Notes are good. File and import edges. And Jeff has the same error if you want to. Can you open up your nodes uh, file or something like that? That works. Okay. Um, Jeff has a file. Jeff has the same problem. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if you wanted to like say it louder for Jeff. Can you open um, stats? Right. Um, I think we only have about three minutes left, so maybe we want to do a wrap up this and then we can help people. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. We can move on. Yeah, just in case we lose people at two. Sure. Right, we'll, we'll troubleshoot later. <laughs> uh, but if you remember, now that we have the basic structure, it's really just a matter of aesthetics at this point. or. Um, your own criteria. So if you just go to layout and force atlas, and you can use a different um, uh, algorithm if you like. So I'm just going to put 15,000 for repulsion strength, run that. And that's not good. It's too restricted. I'm going to change this again to add another zero. That's better. Stop this algorithm, right? And then, you, anybody remember what was next in terms of representation? Labels? Sure. I mean, there's no real order. I guess you could put, go with labels, right? And it shows you the different uh, characters and their uh, nodes, their connections, right? And then you can go and 
click on size control on node side. So it's going to be roughly uh, all the same side right now. So we move to a change, right? Um, but let's just change the node colors, right? Under appearance nodes, and color palette, select it, right? Uh, go to green, yeah, right to the green. I'm going to click apply, right? It's the same thing. So see the different like gradients of green represents the relative importance of the uh, node, right? And then we can run the same statistics again if we like with network diameter and modularity. I mean, this is a pretty simple graph, so I'm not sure if this will really be all that important. Let's run that. Let's run modularity. Okay. And then go to here's the nodes size, right? Choose an attribute. Uh, Mr. Charlie, see that's like way too big. So I'm going to change it to something. That's better. Right? So um, I think we're running out of time. So I'm just going to stop it there. But you can see, like, do the same steps over again, and you can represent your graph however you see fit, and then you can export it when you're when you're ready. I think. Uh, so at this point, uh, we can play around further. If, you, if you're good, then um, you can try um, tinkering with your graph. And, uh, if you're having problems, I'll try to troubleshoot with you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. And I said this online, but our next workshop is on October 5th. Uh, we're going to do Zotero, which is just bibliographic management and a tool for that. And it sounds like David will be around for a few minutes. I feel like we should clap. Thanks, David. Oh, people over distance, how is the, the fancy new web conference cam? Is it, did it help? Did it work? Hmm. Can't hear anybody. Can they hear me? Jeremy had a thumbs up on his camera. So. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I have all of our. Um, all of our fall events here with the, the next one being Zotero if anyone wants it. Um, or if you think your grad students need it. Yep. <laughs> so it's hard to see people because we're sh I was sharing my screen, but now you can see the camera zooming in on folks on the top. Okay. Is there a way to make these graphs like uh Created to the web, so you, you know when you hover over like a node, it'll you know show who that node's connected to, or does it only export as you know PDF, image, vector based? Uh, uh, like I know it's probably super complicated. I just don't know if it's is it possible. It's, as far you know, as I know, the things I've seen are just static representations. Yeah, I don't. Maybe there may be a way to add that. Okay. Great.